last name ever, first name greatest, like a sprained ankle boy, ain't nothing to play with, started off local, but thanks to all the haters, I know G4 pilots on a first name basis, bars, damn, man, y'all already know what it is, J. Williams, let's live, life fam, we're back, y'all know where my homeboy Mark works with me, works with me. Me and Mark did a lot of time together. Mark has got the memory of an elephant. I thought I was blessed when it comes to having a good memory. Mark remembers everything. Jay, you remember Seal Wagner? And he's like, this, this, I, this dude just paid too much attention. I paid great attention, but it was like he was taking notes or something. And in our talks, in our days at work, we laugh, we joke, we work. He brings up a lot of incidents and stories that to be honest, to be honest, I have forgotten about. Or maybe just the severity of it. Some things your mind just kind of tries to hide and blank out. That's what today's story is. Today is one of those stories for sure. Now somebody said when I posted the gay for the stay thumbnail last night, a viewer said, strange topic. It's strange if you've never been to prison, if you've never done a long amount of time locked up. It is not strange to men that have done large amounts of time, especially when you end up at a place where the majority of people there have life. If you're in an environment where 70% of the men there are never going home, well, you're going to see things you wouldn't see at other places. You get into some lower levels where everybody's got a couple years left or they got less than five years. You don't see all that. You see it, but it's not like that. Like, people don't just, you know, stop being gay because they're at a lower level or a higher level. It's just at the higher levels, it's way more accepted because, guys, I ain't never going home. I can't be with no woman. They got all these excuses. I don't care what you do. Let's clear that up real quick. I don't care. It doesn't do anything to me. It doesn't affect me what your sexual preference is in life. Be yourself. Be true to who you are. I can respect that. I've said it before. I respect anyone that is true who, to who they are. Don't be afraid of what the world thinks of you. Be yourself. But you get up into them higher levels, and there's a whole lot of guys that try to deny why they're doing what they're doing. Oh, it's because, man, if I was on the streets, no, homeboy, you're gay. Straight like that, you're gay. No, I'm not gay. I only do this because I'm locked up. You are gay. It's okay, you're gay. I don't care. I'm not gay. You can be gay. That's you're right. No, I'm just saying though, I wasn't doing this in the world. If you're doing this, it's something you've thought about. It's something you enjoy. It's something that was there. You didn't just wake up one day and say, oh, I think I'm gay. It's not how it happened. This was something that was going on in the back of your mind that now the opportunity has presented itself. So here you are. A lot of those lifers, and I'm not saying all lifers, so if you got a friend doing life, a family member, don't get on the phone with them and say, Jay said, because that's not what I said. But a lot of those guys, that's what they do. It is what it is. Gay for the state. Now, I want you to know something. Kind of a long opening, but I got to do this to get us into the story. A lot of these men that get these boys, very controlling very aggressive, very violent, very jealous. So here comes the new dude, the gay dude. He's going to find him a man, gets him a man. A lot of times it turns into a full-blown domestic dispute, cases of abuse. One man putting his hands on another man and beating him and beating him and beating him for so much as Looking at another man, looking in that direction, talking to somebody. I've seen these men put hands all over these boys. I've seen these men take knives and go to other people and say, hey, we're talking to my boy. So strange topic. Nah, it's not strange. With all that being said, you know how to see it. You know how to live it. So let's relive it. Keep an open mind for a second. Now, I need you to remember this. I'm an 80s baby, right? Born February 5th, 1980. Raised up in the 80s. Was born in 
was a teenager in the 90s. Being gay, stuff like that, nah, you ain't really see it. A lot of kids today, teenagers, that's very common for them. It's not something that uh, I had seen a lot of prior to incarceration. We did have these two gay chicks that lived next to me when I was a kid. One had like the spiked butch haircut, and then you had the female in the relationship. And I remember how taboo that was looking back on it. How everybody in the neighborhood gossiped and whispered and like kind of stared at them when they toted their groceries in the house, right? Mind you now, I'm just a kid. I'm seven or eight years old. Coming to prison, being introduced to all of that, like I say, voila, I was homophobic, stressed all the way out. Just, just felt like everybody was like, like looking at me or thinking about me some type of wrong way. And then I would come to realize that's not true. They know who plays Paul. They know who gets down. They know who's into what they're into. They're not going to come over here and mess with me knowing I'm a straight man, knowing that there's going to be some kickback on it, like I'm going to feel some type of way. No, they're going to go with the guys that they know are into that. And you know how they know? They see that man staring at them when they come in. The boy comes in. The boy is word. It's a name. It's a phrase we use. Gump, sissy, punk, boy. There's a whole lot of different terms we use for the, the gay guys, but they come in and you yourself can tell who's gay in there. Guys, you didn't know were gay. Tickets just stop. The moment you look up front, you see those new intakes coming in and you see there's a boy in the group. Stop what you're doing and scan the room. Hmm. Hmm. You'd be surprised. Guys, you never expected to stop what they're doing. And they're standing there staring. Locked in. On some creepy Mr. Herbert family guy type stuff. I mean, just. It's like in my dream. Hey there. Like, please make eye contact with me. Notice me. Notice me. The guy over here, yeah, with the fresh iron shirt and the blue jeans and. And, and the pro Tim zone. And look at me. You see it. I noticed and found out a lot of different dudes that I knew were gay that I didn't know were gay because a boy got introduced into the pod. Now, with these relationships, these boys come in. Gay guys can tell you what they want. If they went to prison, I've never met a gay guy that went to prison that did not have a prison relationship. Seen it a thousand times. Boy comes in, if he ain't got a man, he's going to have all types of other men coming at him. Because that is the closest thing to a lot of these guys mentally. That's the closest thing to a female that they're ever going to see. And for a lot of these guys, they ain't got life. Because I'm locked up. No, bro, because you're gay. Straight up. Stop the cap. You're gay. It's okay. That's just who you are. These boys, one of the men standing there staring at them is going to become their mate is going to become their other half. A lot of these guys are really off in the head. A lot of these guys are sick, twisted, demented, have killed people. Some of these men have killed women. And these boys come in there and get in a full-blown relationship with them. Next thing you know, you'll see the boy. The boy's eye will be swole shut because he was talking to somebody yesterday. And... Oh boy, ain't like him talking to whoever he was talking to, so he put hands all on him. That eye heal up and won't be long. It's the same thing. It's like battered wife syndrome, except it's two men. That has been played out a million and one times. I've seen that unfold a million and one times. But with what I'm about to tell you on today's story, I did not see play out a million and one times. This was a very isolated and random lover's quarrel that I come across and that Mark had brought up to me. We got a boy named Pink. Let me run this down to you. These guys are naming themselves. Like, no, your, your homeboys will give you a nickname. No, these guys are 100%. The majority of them are giving themselves their own nickname. 
So dudes would get like, how the hell this dude ended up being pink? I'll, I'll never know. This square jaw having dehydrated California raisin, old school rock, WWF reject looking ass dude has the nerve to call himself pink. We would hear dudes nicknames and we would make fun of them. We're bidding. We're passing time. Dude's got the nerve to call himself Nicki Minaj. Knowing damn well you look like Rick James. So Nicki Minaj is now Ricky Minaj. This dude, like Earthworm Jim, like, like Dave Chappelle, if he lost 100 pounds and calls himself Beyonce. No, you are he Beyonce. We would go in on the gay dudes when it came to the nicknames. We have a boy named Pink. Pink is not your average boy. Pink is a good 6162. A solid 235, 240. Pink didn't really do what all the other boys did. A lot of these boys would try to change their voice to try to sound like females. They would be over the top when it comes to acting like a female. Now, gay guys try to act, some gay guys, especially in prison, will try to act more feminine than a woman. Where did, where did he do that at? Prison. He did have his feminine tendencies and ways and the way he walked, the way he talked, but he wasn't over the top with it. Several different relationships he had had and we had heard stories about before when this dude shows up, a new guy will show up and with him will come the whispering, the stories, the gossiping, everybody, oh man, I was on another spread with him and he beat his boyfriend up. Oh man, I was cross yard with him, he was beating his boyfriend up really, really fast. As Pink shows up, his luggage, his history, the backstory on Pink shows up. And the backstory on Pink is, Pink beats his men up. This is new. This is very new. So Pink's the abuser? Well, they say, my little, I was over there, he I dug all up at the boy, beat his man's face all up. Like, the boy can rumble. Yeah, all right, man. You hear so much. Believe what you see and everything else, you got to see it to believe it. Duty. Where do you get a name like Duty? Maybe that, I can see that being your name if your grandma gave it to you or you've had it since you were a kid, but Duty? I don't want to be called Duty. Duty just reminds me of a full diaper. Like you got crunchy boxers. Like you smell like something that flies would want to hang out with. Like you just Duty? Duty is the guy that hooks up with Pink. Everything's good in the beginning. I remember when Duty set eyes on Pink. Duty is a dude that lives above the cell. Maybe two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's down by the window. So maybe about my cells here. He's maybe 10 cells over on the top tier. And there's a window down there. And his cell was two or three cells over from that window. And the day that Pink comes in and a whole bunch of new wind takes come in, sitting at a table waiting to be called for wreck. Right after lunchtime, they're going to do afternoon wreck. And a whole bunch of new guys come in. Some of these guys are coming from other compounds. Some are coming from the hole. Some are coming from here, there, wherever. We get a group of guys, about five, six guys. You look up front, scan to see if you know anybody. Anybody I know of, anybody I done did time with. Oh, damn, there's a boy. Scan the room. Let's see real quick who's looking at the boy. <laughs> There are dudes everywhere locked in on this boy. You look up at the top tier and Duty is doing what I've seen done a million and one times. He has got those hearts just beating out of his eyes. He's locked in like he just spotted his soulmate. Like he has just seen a glimpse into the future the moment this boy little walked into the pod. I see him. He sees the boy. I see everybody else. And they're all staring up there at the boy. A lot of these guys are known to be gay, but a lot of these guys, well, y'all just got exposed. You look, okay, it's okay to look and see who's around, but there's a difference between looking and doing what you're doing. You're not looking. You're daydreaming. You're planning. You're plotting. You're scheming. You're, you're trying to, you know, get in where you fit in. Duty is that dude. He's on the top tier staring. From there, the boy comes in, packs his, you know, unpacks his stuff, puts it in the cell. And you see him go out to the microwave. He takes his bowl out there. There's some other boys sitting at the table. They introduce themselves. And a lot of times the boys want to speak. They don't like a new boy around because 
a new boy coming in the pod means that's the potential for their man to cheat on them with this guy. So a lot of times them boys will bump heads, but I guess they know Pink, know of Pink. He stops at the table, has a brief conversation with them, heads on over to the microwave, makes his stuff, gets his cup of hot water, boom, returns to his cell. There you go. You see old duty and his penitentiary finest and his nice Levi's with his crisp white teeth that he keeps for these type of occasions. Head on over to the boy's cell and just stand there. And there starts the relationship. God, I hate my life. So terrible. Huh. So there they are. They're together now. We see them on the yard. We see them in the chow hall. When ever duty's not there, Pink is cleaning the cell. Keeps it like a little penitentiary apartment with the bare minimums. They've got the little throw rugs on the ground that are actually just strips of the, the blankets that we lay on and cards all over here and pictures all on the wall and art drawings of flowers. He has done the best to make that cell a home. Now, Pink and Duty now live in the cell, which is very, very common because I've even seen it to where dudes will go fight the boy's cellmate that's not gay just because they're so crazy, possessive, and controlling that they're convinced in their mind that the non-gay man is now gay yeah, they end up in the cell together. Like I said, they eat together, sleep together. There's two dudes sleeping in the same bed. Can, oh, God, I want to go home. Now, at first, it starts off like any other thing. You see it. Everybody sees it. It comes out. Everybody knows. The guys that didn't know duty was gay are going to fall back. Penitential rules are in play. This is how it goes. I am associated to you. Whatever you are into, I am automatically guilty by association. So if you decide at some point in your bed after we've become homeboys that all of a sudden you've got some newfound sexuality that I didn't know about when we first started rocking, I've got to cut you off. If I accept it, then uh, it's kind of like that's what I'm into. And it's not any shots at anybody. It's nothing against anybody. These are the prison politics. You are who you hang out with. So everybody pretty much falls back from duty. And like I said, everything looked good on the home front. It never happens until it happens. We don't have wreck for one, one reason or another one day. And so when we don't have wreck, there's a lot of guys congregating the pod. Guys will be going from cell to cell, maybe hanging out in the cell, clicked up over the staircase, out there playing cards, standing here talking, over there talking. There's not a lot to do. You're locked inside this big ass room this pod all day with these other men duty sitting there pink sitting there and they're carrying their conversation talking back and forth and out of nowhere you just hear and the room goes quiet as we all take our head and scan we've heard that noise before somebody just got the dog shit slapped out of them so we all scan around heads are looking we're searching we're looking and we look over and Duty hops up from the table and now you're lost. She reaches over and grabs Pink up by the shirt. As I've told you, Pink is a whole entire man. Pink just opened her hand, slapped the shit out of Duty. Why? I don't know. I wasn't in that conversation. I don't know what he said. I don't know what he said. But for some reason or another, he said something that pissed Pink off. And Pink just opened hand, Grizzly Bear Adams slapped him with the big manly ass calloused hands right across his face. At which point, Duty stood up grip and tried to manhandle Pink. I told y'all, Pink is a whole entire big-ass man. As he's snatching on Pink, Pink is just kind of sitting there. And he's tussling on his shirt and he stands up. Towers over this dude. Dude falls back. Goes off in the cell. Now you got dudes clowning, bidding. Oh, shit. The boy just smacked the dog shit out of Duty. Dudes are clowning him. Pink follows, goes on over there, and when you go in your cell, there's a button on the wall. You can push this button, and when said button is pushed, the cell door will close. And then there's just a slot in the door, and from there, you can't really see what's going on, but you can hear. And if you walk by and glimpse in, you can see. Dude heads over the cell. Pink heads over the cell behind him. Hits that button. That door closes, and it takes a matter of seconds before you hear a couple select words, and you just hear the sound of... Boom, 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 boom. Fist making contact with the flesh. Pink is in there. We don't know what the outcome is going to be. I could pretty much foresee what's going to happen. Because if you put mano-a-mano, man-to-man, 
and you just base it off of size and base it off of what we just saw, Pink's about to trash this dude in his cell. Don't get it messed up. Don't think because he's gay that he can't fight. A lot of guys got a misconception that gay men cannot fight some gay guys, drag dudes. Don't want to be the guy that just got beat up by a gay guy because your masculinity comes into play and all these different things. It's just a bad look because now you can't really talk to me like that because a oh boy just beats you up. Go on somewhere, go play before I hurt you. But Pink put some hands on him. This all transpires, takes place for about a good 30, 45 seconds. Three or four minutes passes. Boop, he hits the button. And shclang, the door slides open. And Pink comes walking out and goes and sits down with the other boys. Proud. They let it be seen. Mm -hmm. Y'all know what I just did in there. Just drug duty's ass. Domestic violence at its finest. The boy just beat up his man. This doesn't happen. This is unheard of. This is a whole new prototype type of boy. What? Stop. The boy sitting down at the table telling the other boys, I guess, what happened and why he did what he did. And he's, you know, trying to come up with the reasons why he just trashed his man in the cell. And duty comes on out a little while later. Maybe another 30, 45 minutes pass before duty comes out. And I guess he's looking for pink. This is a relationship. He's got to go find his boy and talk it out, even though they fought now. He comes out there and he's got these little goose eggs, knots, different abrasions, concussions to his knot, a tumor, tumor looking things all over his forehead with them big ass man knuckles and knotted him all up and just did his thing to him. Talks to Pink. Pink goes over there and everything is good. This would become a common occurrence after that fight. There, I can't tell you how many times we'd be dead sleeping in the cell, just sleeping, and all of a sudden you're, like I told you, you got super senses. All your senses heighten when you're locked up. Facts. You learn to pick up on noises, the sound of a walkie-talkie, keys, boots. Unusual noises will instantly wake you up out of your sleep. I woke up many times to pink up there, rumbling duty. Now, duty's just not somebody that's going to get beat on. He would fight back, but he could not beat Pink. On a one-on-one -on -one note, Pink was just battered husband syndrome when it came to beating on duty. This goes on for months and months and months. Pink was the jealous one in the situation. If duty even so much looked over where Pink was and Pink was talking to some other boys, Pink would go fight duty because Pink was under the assumption that, well, you was just looking over here at the other boys. When in reality, he was just looking, where's Pink at? Oh, there's Pink. Oh, I saw you look at the boys. Pink would go fight duty. They go through these phases where even though they live in the same cell, they would come out of the cell and they would separate. They wouldn't speak. Months had gone by now. And you would see Duty walking the track by himself because everybody's pretty much done cut him off now. Plus, they don't want to fight Pink's big ass. And then you would see Pink walking with the boys. They have a lover's quarrels. Where do they do this at? It continues to go, continues to go, continues to go. I cannot put an honest count on how many times Pink had to fight duty or Pink put hands on duty. But you're talking now, we're going from that day that he walked into that first fight, and we have fast-forwarded now about six months. It's about to get crazy. Each time they would fight, it would get worse and worse. Now, we've all got our own things going on. We've all got our own lives. People got things going on out in the world. They got to get on the phone to deal with. People got situations going on while they're locked up. They got to deal with. You've got the gangs running crazy. You've got the inmate politics. You've got the guards, the shakedowns, the hustle, the bustle, the just penitentiary life going on around you every day. But now with this pink and duty situation, it's entertaining. They've always got. They have now on. gone to the administration. They break up, get back together. This is crazy to even be talking about. They break up, get back together. Break up, get back together. They've gone to administration several times and said, move us out to cell together. Move us out to cell together. The guards have come by, seen both of them sleeping in the same bed. No, we ain't moving y'all, but y'all ain't getting along now. But you don't want to be gay no more? No. Stay your ass in that cell. They don't separate them. The fights continue. They continue. Isolated, isolated. Not talking, talking. Not walking together, walking together. Duty on the track by himself. Duty on the track with Pink. It's just a constant revolving door of We've seen this with these two a million and one times. And being convicts and inmates, we sit back and watch it out, you know, unplayed. 
They go through the longest spell of not talking that we have seen. Usually this will last a few hours, a day at the most. They go in the cell and ignore each other, put their headphones on, whatever they do in the cell when they do it. This has been a couple of days now where we see that they've not really been talking. The tension is so thick in the air, it's like you can cut it with a knife. You want it to be gay, right? You don't just wake up gay, like I said. He came out, and this is what he came out to. Well, fast forward a little bit. I'm going to ask a question. I understand having sports in prison, and y'all know where I'm going with this. I understand having sports. I understand we need recreation. I've played sports in prison. I've lifted weights, basketball, softball, different sports. I've played them to pass time. But I never really could wrap my head around the first moment that I walked out into the yard, and I saw guys with softball bats. I've seen men be hit with softball bats on more than one occasion. But I remember the first time I seen a softball bat, I was like, yo, these dudes, these the prisoners lost their mind. You have got convicted killers everywhere. Psychos on this yard right now. Why is there baseball bats out here? Why do they have a baseball bat on the prison yard? Oh, no, no, no. I need the biggest knife I can get. If somebody can just walk over there and pick that bat up and beat me half to death with it. This is my mind the first time I see that they have softball bats, Eastern aluminum bats out there on the wreck yard. They go through this phase where they're not talking. Pink is now blatantly starting to talk to other guys right in front of Duty, and Duty ain't gonna do nothing about it. If Duty goes and approaches the new man or the guy that Pink's talking to, well, Pink is gonna handle the situation. And he's already got beat up several times, so. Not many people are scared of duty. We've seen them actually knuck up right in front of us and rumble out in the open. Everything ain't happening behind the door several times. They went straight at it right in front of us. So we've seen duty's fight game. Not many guys are going to care about disrespecting duty when it comes to pink. The dude's gay. He's going to holler at pink. Pink's telling them he ain't with duty. So they've got the situation. So now pink is hollering at other dudes. But if duty tries it, well, pink is going to beat duty up. Pink has also gotten to several fights now with other boys behind his jealous thoughts, his crazy, like, made-up scenarios of what's going on behind his back. He's done beat up several of the boys now behind duty too, right? Always goes back to the yard. Me, Mark, Jacob Aquino. It was, I can't remember the rest. Quite a bit of us standing on the wreck yard this day. Now, you've got the bleachers. You've got the softball field, home plate, first, second, third. We're standing out past second, maybe 20 feet out past second in the grass. You look over towards the bleachers and you have Duty standing there beside the building talking to a boy. You look around, nowhere do you see Pink. You see the other boys, you see their men. Pink is nowhere to be found. I do not know where Pink was at. I know that Pink was in the administration building. That's where school takes place visitation, the gym, trades, all these different things happen over in that administration building. But I don't know where he was at this day. What I do know is as we're standing there talking and I see Duty's talking to this boy, I look and I see Pink coming out of the administration building and walking down the sidewalk. As he gets closer to the building, he spots Duty talking to the boy. Now the boys had a way with the guards of getting things that we couldn't get. Some guys would whisper and say, oh, it's because they're snitching or now they be trying to be all friendly with the guards, guys frowned upon that, but the boys had a way of getting what they wanted when it came to the guards. This boy goes to the guard that's standing there in front of the building and says, hey, open the wreck yard and let me on. They would have never opened that door for me. Once that gate has been closed, you missed wreck. The guard takes the key and unlocks it, lets Pink onto the wreck yard. Pink walks around the side of the building, Runs right up on duty and just starts giving him the business. Gets him on the ground, rips his shirt, scratches his face, knocks him all up. Talks all this crap. Now, I guess at this point, duty had had enough of the getting beat up by Pink. Pink goes to walk off and duty runs up behind him and boom, punches him in the back of his head and just starts swinging on him. Giving him everything he's got, rocking a big ass watermelon head in his head, just kind of bobbling. And for a minute, he's taking it and he turns around and grabs duty and... Boom! Slams him in the dirt. And after he slams him, maybe three, four feet from him, to the left, lies a softball bat. A bat that Duty should have picked up to beat his big Hulk Hogan looking ass with, but no. Pink picks up the bat. You see Duty try to scramble and get up and say, oh, stop, stop! Pink grabs that bat and he swings. Boom! Comes down and 
hits him on his shoulder, drops him. He jumps up, tries to run, boom, hits him in his back. He continues trying to run, and that third one made a different sound. Dong! Cracked him right in the back of his head. And it sounded like the equivalent of a softball bat smacking a softball over the fence. He smacked Duty in the back of the head with that bat, and Duty was trying to run with everything he had, and he, boom, and when he hit him, you just seen the life go out of him, and he just fell. And just slid into the dirt. Pink would smack him another two times before taking the bat and just slinging it over in the grass and walking off. A couple minutes later, that same guard that let Pink on the yard comes over and glances through the gate. Now, the lady in the tower didn't see this. Nobody else saw this. None of these guards saw this. We have a perimeter vehicle that drives around the outside of the prison 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Like clockwork, it's going to pass about every six minutes. I've timed it. Nobody saw Pink just beat Duty upside the head with that bat. The guard comes back over and just glimpses through the gate at everybody on the wreck yard and sees a man down. Not only a man down, but it appears that he's laying in mud. On a beautiful summer day, there's no rain. There's no water. There's no mud. That is a ginormous pile of sand and dirt that is now caked with blood. They go into a frantic. Guard hits the, the code. The tower hits the alarm. This loud ass alarm comes over. They tell everybody to lay down, stay in your place, wherever you're at, stop what you're doing, cease, lock the buildings down. They got to figure out what's wrong with that man. Now, this guard cannot come onto the yard by himself. They have to move in groups of two. I've told you on the past, moving in one is a violation. You must have a second guard with you, A, to keep you safe, and B, to document what's going on. This guard now has to wait for a second guard to come up before he can open that gate and go check on duty laying on the field. This has been a better part of six, seven minutes since Pink attacked him at the bat. You see guards start coming out of all sections. We're laying in the grass now, looking at the administration building, watching Pink. Pink is laid down on the ground like everybody else, like you don't know what's going on. And I'm looking over the administration building, I see guards running out of all different doors. Guards are running out of housing units and they're all rushing this way towards this gate to unlock this yard and come in and check on this man. They flood into the yard. At this point, we're still at the same place we were, right past second base, laid out in the grass. And they rush up on the duty. As they're running, you can see their feet smushing in this big, wet pile. They keep all of us laying on the ground. No sooner they got the duty and they seen the state that duty was in, I look over the administration building. You've got medical right there. Halfway down the center of this building, there's a door that goes into the center of the building. And that's where medical is. And they come running out with this gurney, shoving this gurney, pushing this gurney. Nurse, the officer that works over there, medicals with the nurse, and they're rushing, pushing this thing as fast as they can. They come through the gate, off the sidewalk, into the dirt, push it up, slide the board off, pick him up, put him on it, and they rush him back down. Boom, down the sidewalk they go, and they bust a right. They get all of us up, into your building, lock into your cells. There's a camera out there, the camera doesn't work. The guard tower didn't see nothing. No guard seen anything. That guard that let Pink on that yard, he knows that him and Duty are in a situation. He knows that this is his building. He sees these two. He's seen the altercations. He hears what's going on. He's also been asked to move them. He just let this boy on the yard. He doesn't say a word. He acts dumb to the fact of what could have just happened. He doesn't know who the prime suspect is, but at the same time, he cannot admit to the administration that he just unlocked the rec yard and let a man on the rec yard that should not have been on the rec yard. Had he had not unlocked that gate, Pink would have came out there, picked that bat up, and smacked Duty in the head with it. We're inside of our cells now. I hear this noise, and it's getting closer, and it's getting closer, and it's getting closer. I look over the tree line, and I see a helicopter coming, and it passes by my building, and it goes out of my view. Now, we have a hospital, Southside Regional Hospital in Emporia, Virginia, that is not very far from the prison. I've been there on several occasions. The trip from, in a car, from the prison to that hospital is maybe a 10, 15 minute drive. They didn't have 10, 15 minutes to waste. They med flighted this guy. I didn't see a lot of med flights. A select few times did I see the actual helicopter show up. It's like in The Walking Dead when you see the helicopter in the scene. It was kind of like that, but I see this helicopter and I hear it from a distance and I watch it come through the tree line poof, and it lands over out of my view. I know what it's for. It's for duty. They med flight him off to the hospital. It doesn't take long. The guards come in, they come to every single cell and they question, 
We do what convicts do. You know what happened? What man? There was a man on the ground. Don't play stupid, man. Y'all were 40 feet over there. Y'all was right past second base. Y'all had to see. No, nah, we didn't see nothing. I didn't. What dude? I mean, I seen that when y'all was out there, there was somebody about it. I don't know how he got that. I thought maybe he was just laying. We don't know, man. We have no statement. Don't know anything. We play dumb to the fact. The other boys have gotten tired of Pink. I told you, Pink, Pink has beat several of these boys up. Pink has caused chaos. Pink is a big grizzly ass man that is not like the average boy that portrays himself as a woman, that has the woman features, that acts like a female. Trans, if you may call it, is what a lot of these guys are. No, Pink is a full on man that has little women ways, but is a good sized dude. They want Pink out the picture. They ain't gonna keep beating them up. You ain't gonna push up on one of them men and they be scared not be able to do anything. They tell on him. They come lock him up, charge him with all these different you know, aggravated assault, malicious wound, you name it, they hit him with a rack of charges for what he did to Duty with that baseball bat. Duty would recover. Duty would go on to press charges, and Pink would be found guilty. I sent us to a whole lot of time in the Department of Corrections. Duty would never be the same. Duty suffered brain damage. And from the people I've talked to that know Duty, and the, it's weird how everybody stopped talking to Duty when he became gay. But then after he got attacked with that bat, all these different dudes want to talk to him, make friends with him, check on him, see if he's okay. Y'all ain't care about him before. Y'all cut him off because he was being himself. But as soon as something bad happens to him, like everybody else in the world does, y'all want to be friends with him again. But the guys I would talk to and the guys I would hear talking about duty that would end up doing time around duty later on down the road said, nah, he's not the same. He's messed up like he's slow. He messed him up and did bad. He's lucky to be alive. He would then be released from prison and go home. So in coming out the closet, thinking he had that day with them butterflies in his stomach, them hearts beating in his eyes, when he locked eyes on Pink and he had just knew he found his soulmate, he found a life-changing event. Something that would ultimately leave his skull cracked, him laying face down in the dirt and with brain damage. This is crazy, crazy to talk about. Now, a lot of people aren't into these type of stories, but I'm going to tell you this. If there's a prison channel out there that does not cover these type of things, they are lying to you. Because that is something that is in prison that you're not going to escape. If you are homophobic, you're scared of gay people, it creeps you out, it freaks you out, do not get locked up because you're going to have to deal with it. That is the reality. They are men just like you are. They were born with men parts. They're going to prison. You're going to live around them. You are not going to go in there and change how prison has been. Prison has been that way since prison has been that way. And it's not going to change anything but you. My advice to you is if you are someone that indulges in that type of stuff and you go to prison, try to avoid it. Try to stay away from it. I've seen those fights happen time and time again. But it's usually not the boy that's getting the upper hand. It's usually the boy that is victimized. The super gay guy in the ordeal, the trans guy in the ordeal, the one that identifies as a woman, is usually the one that gets beat up on. It's usually the one that gets victimized and gets hurt. It just so happened that in this ordeal, Duty uh, picked him a boy, but he didn't know what he was picking when he got to picking. But anyways, these jails, detention centers, these prisons, these facilities, they're all just crazy worlds inside of a already crazy world we live in and as always i know what i'm doing just trying to keep y'all entertained are you not entertained and like always this is jay williams let's live life and to all my real ones and there are some real ones out there because y'all still watching me now y'all know how we do salute this is crazy do not get locked up